One of my clients owns a furniture store and they told me if I could come up with little coffee tables and end tables that had hairpin legs on them, they would sell like crazy. I checked the price on hairpin legs and they're phenomenally expensive. I can't be spending that kind of money. You guys know me. I make my own. So with the help of a 20% coupon over at Harbor Freight, I got this. The Central Machinery Compact Bender. This is basically a hairpin leg factory in a box. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Now we start with this. The base. The bending lever with its telescopic arm. A box of something. A box of something else. Instructions. All right, let's get that out of the way. Okay, so these are all the adapters. And this is pretty slick because they give you a place to put them all. We'll begin by mounting the ring assembly to the pedestal. They want these spacers under here. And this bushing goes in here. Okay. That's all right. The next step is to find a place to mount it to the floor. And I think right here is pretty good. You'll notice it's right in front of that garage door. That's the door I use least. It's, it's a two bay wide door and uh, I've got a total of five bays here so I can, I can afford to lose one edge of that door and I can always uh, remove it from the concrete if I need to. So uh, next step is to drill some holes. So this is intended for half inch bolts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark with a half inch masonry bit where the holes need to be. Then I'm gonna come back with a quarter inch masonry bit, drill pilot holes, and then come back with a three quarter inch masonry bit and punch those out to accept my lag bolt shields for half inch lag bolts. This just goes to show you, don't ever buy a hammer drill that has a plastic body. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'd actually be pissed off about this if I hadn't picked it up for $15 off Craigslist. So this is pretty solid. This isn't going anywhere. This is going to be just fine for making my hairpin legs. So I'm ready for a trial run. I've got a 36 inch piece of 3 8 inch hot rolled rod, uh, which is what I plan to make my hairpin legs out of. It's marked at 18 inches. I know that I want a one and a quarter inch radius, so I've put the one and a quarter inch die on the pivot point, and, uh, and this is going to wrap it around. One thing I'm sure of is the bend is going to start before the middle, so I need to figure out where to put my center mark. 
so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try with the center mark on the follower bushing. And we'll just wrap this around and, and see what we come up with. Well, that is not quite the center, but I am really digging the radius on that. Okay, on the first piece, I marked it at 18 inches and bent it around, and the bent side ended up one inch longer than the clamped side. So I have moved the mark to 18 and a half inches. We'll align it the same way I did before and bend it again and see what we get. And I think we got a winner there. Yep, that looks like it. So I want these six inches wide on center. And that's where these are, right here. This one turned out even, so that one's good. This one's a little together. That one's good too. So with a little bit of effort, I was finally able to get it consistent. These two are exactly the same. These are the last two I did. Now that I know what to do, I can make every single one the same. On to the actual hairpin legs. There are only a few factors involved in being able to reliably reproduce anything. One is your stock has to be the same. Every piece has to be the same. Every one of these is within a sixteenth of an inch of each other. There's four of them here. Every one of these is the same. So the only thing left in reproducing this is to make sure this is in the same place and this is in the same place every single time you make it. And the way you do that is by building a fixture and that's what I'm going to do right now. You take a look here, I've got a couple of pieces of angle iron and they're clamped down to the bench. I'll use this to square up my fixture. The uh, corner, back corner is cut out so the point of this can slide in there and doesn't butt up against anything. We'll start by welding those together. There it is. Now with this, I have a place to put my corner bracket. And when you do this, you want to make sure the counter sinks are facing up because uh, this will be the bottom of the leg. And you'll screw the screws into the counter sink holes. Now, the next thing is to give this hairpin a consistent place to rest. To do that, we're going to use a piece of angle iron. Okay, so here we are. We have the, we have the corner bracket holder. So the way I plan to use this thing is I'll just lay my corner bracket in there and clamp it to the table with a, with a quick clamp. That way I get my ground to the table. And we'll just take the hairpin and lay it up against this upright, right? Okay, we'll tack it first, then see if it moved. And if it didn't, we'll come back and weld it. Now that did pull it away from, from its resting place up here. So now I'm going to tack it on the inside and see if it pulls it back. And 
that did pull it back. So now it's tacked. I can break it out of my jig and weld it all around. the same to me. Let's keep going. So there we have it. Four, admittedly, not identical, but reasonable facsimiles of the same 17 and a half inch hairpin table leg. I got a set of four. They are within an eighth of an inch across the board and once mounted you could just flex it a little bit uh, to get your to take any rocking out of the table that it's on. I'm going with it. So there it is. I'm calling this one a success and as of this moment I am in the hairpin table leg business so if you need hairpin table legs for your project contact me and we'll discuss how many you need and sizes and prices. So please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.